Hello guys, good evening, and welcome back to another review of my Doctor Who Marathon. Last time we did the review on the Mind Robber, a silly but very delusional story, I really enjoyed doing that review. But now, finally, we're moving on to a review that I actually plan to do. And so today's review, guys, is The Invasion. And I have to say, for an APAR story, they did a really fantastic job to make the story so brilliant and so enjoyable and not making it so draggy which is what many Doctor Who stories, when they're doing an episode for like six episodes, they tend to make it really, really drag along. But this doesn't drag on at all, for my opinion, apart from the Cybermen getting into the story. I wish they could have included the Cybermen a bit early in the story, but oh well, it's still a madness and good story, and I really enjoy it. Just a point before we get cracking on with this review. Don't watch this story all in one go, like I did. Don't be like me because you will fall asleep by the end of episode 8. You will just fall asleep, you will drop off, and you will have no remembering of what happened in the story. So please, have a break in between during episode 4, please do, because otherwise you're going to be falling asleep for episode 8 for all I know, missing out on all of the best bits. And so guys, let's get cracking on with the review on The Invasion, written by Derek Sherwin, from a story by Kid Peddler. Investigating the disappearance of an element scientist, the Doctor and his companions follow his trail to the London headquarters of International Electromatics, a global supplier of electronic equipment run by the formidable Tobias Vaughan. Teaming up with the newly formed United Nations Intelligence Task Force unit under the command of Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, it soon becomes apparent that Vaughan is working to his own sinister agenda. As Cybermen invade in cities all over the world, can the Doctor convince Vaughan to help him defeat their plan for global domination? Now that sort of just gives away the entire secret away of who's invading Earth. The Cybermen of course, but it's still a fantastic story and we might as well start off with the main character which I have to talk about so much and it is Tobias Vaughan, the amazing character played by the wonderful Kevin Stoney who also played Marvick Chen in the Daleks Master Plan. He is just a fantastic actor and the way he played Tobias Vaughan is just sensational. He's just a sensational actor, and the character of Tobias Vaughan is just so, so sinister. He makes such a great dictator, like any other supervillain in any invasion story. He makes such a great, sinister, and very aggressive dictator in this story, but he also has a very charming, a very friendly way in episode 1, but then in, a, in during episodes 3, 4, and 5, he does get quite aggressive if you mess with him too much, and he really becomes a big, sinister threat in, in your way if you're going to be standing in his way, so he's a fantastic character to Tobias Vaughan. Just a wonderful and this way that he hates the Cybermen so much in episode 8. From all of the way until episode 8, he really felt that the Cybermen were his allies, partnering with the Cybermen. But as in episode 8, he felt that he had like such a nervous breakdown and completely ruined his dream of being controller of the entire world with the Cybermen and crushed his dream and like he has such a and he had such a mental breakdown. In, in, in at the start of episode eight of like the time destroyed my creation, that sort of thing, and I really did see that the kind of bond between Tavares Vaughan and the Cybermen but you know um, the Cybermen you can't make bargains with them and that was really what I liked about Patrick Troughton his seriousness to convince Vaughan that the Cybermen are evil and you can't bargain with them and I really liked his determination and his willpower to help Vaughan you know destroy these Cybermen and really Patrick Troughton did a fantastic job in this meeting and joining reunion with the um, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart also in unit he was really 
really fantastic with his brain and with with his um, sensational way of thinking things throughout and what the plot line was throughout the entire story and that sort of thing. He really had such a um, a way of thinking that I really um, was intrigued by, and I, w I would like the kind of suspicion that the Doctor had for Tobias Vaughan. It was just so strange to how a normal human being's blinking is like um, up to like ten or fifteen seconds, but Vaughan was blinking very less frequently than that and it was almost like sin he was Tobias Vaughan is almost like a sinister and almost inhuman kind of character and we, we do see the kind of inhuman factor about him in episode 6 I believe Professor Watkins gets you know Tobias Vaughan hands Professor Watkins a gun and he offers to shoot him and what and he basically you know, um, t um, Professor Walken shoots, you know, P Tobias Vaughn's many times, but initially he's still alive at the end, and then that suddenly that put me um, um, a brainstorm in my mind that in a previous line he said that my body may be cybernetic, but my mind stays human. Hmm, and that sort of thing. So, initially, it's like um, Tobias Vaughn can never die from merely bullets. But his mind stays human though, and so he has the brain of an intelligent and very sinister guy, but he has, his body is all like in a cybernetic body really, like the Cybermen. But the Cybermen, they're completely cybernetic, whereas Tobias Vaughn, he's way more empowered than the Cybermen. He has much more power over them, but in episode 7, the Cybermen do take a toll and go against Tobias Vaughn and really just go against him and his plan to, you know, go with, through with world domination. And then suddenly the Cybermen finally, you know, see out the whole plan to buy his one um, to his plan, really. Once the Cybermen have invaded the entire world and gotten rid of everybody else, the bomb will be able to be delivered on Earth and therefore... That and therefore Tobias Vaughn will be able to get rid of the Cybermen and then take control of the entire world. But would you rather be the ruler of a dead world and just live, just live a normal life? And so that was really the whole plotline in the entire story, wanting complete control over the entire world without even the Cybermen, you know, being um, at, this, at his disposal. He wanted to get rid of them because although he needed their, his, their power in order to succeed, but in the end he was going to get rid of them anyway. So yeah, I really adore Tobias Vaughn's sinister character and although the way that he treated Packer, Packer just seemed as like a very great character but he had this kind of sense that he wanted to beat somebody up from like, intrude, like intruding into the um, complex but he really was a bit thicker sometimes and he got shouted out by to Tobias Vaughn's aggression shouting and he felt almost intimidated by Tobias Vaughn almost and I really liked that. But I think P Packer was a bit stupider sometimes, but although he really felt that he had like the glory in his eyes, like, hmm, I'm the best. And then suddenly a scene later, he's like, I'll, I'll get them next time. And like, you know, he, that sort of thing happens. And so he's really proud in his in his job and his rank, but he just doesn't do it to... to he doesn't do it well, really, and does he has such a lack of intuition to it, a, la a lack of thinking, really. And so, yeah... Packer, um, Packer's a really okay, you know, sidekick to, towards um, Vaughn, but he does seem a bit thick in sometimes. Anyway, let's move on to another um, side of the entire story. Let's talk about UNIT, the biggest organisation in Doctor Who history. And this organisation gladly helped out the Doctor with helping defeating these evil Cybermen. It, to my mind, if UNIT didn't get involved within this story, I don't know how the Doctor could cope with all of this stress and all of the Cybermen invading the entire city of London, then how would he be able to destroy them? And so UNIT must have, must be involved in this entire story and I really loved UNIT's intervention with the entire story and also Brigadier Left Big Stewart. My gosh. Brilliant, brilliant character and also Nicholas Cordy, the guy who plays the Brigadier Left Brook Stewart, is just a magnificent actor and he can play the role so well. He's such a great leader, he can lead any sort of army into battle. He, he was really, really brilliant in episode 2 where um, the Doctor and Jamie had a reunion with um, each other and then he sort of, you know, told about the entire electromatic setup. Well, 
well, international electromatics, I mean, that is very difficult to pronounce, but he told us around the entire setup of, like, people actually went into, you know, the, the complex okay, but then when it came out, they sort of were a bit odd, and it really had the whole suspicion in Patrick Charlton's mind that he really needed to go to the complex and talk to, to Vaughan about this entire setup, and so, yeah, I think, Patrick, I mean, the Brigadier had loads of the answers that Patrick Charlton wanted to have, and so that was really good of him. But also, many of the other characters, like Sergeant Benson, brilliant, brilliant. Sergeant Benson is just a brilliant, brilliant character. And it also, he does appear in much later episodes in the John Pertwee era, but he's just a fantastic guy. And I think Brigadier Lethbrook Stewart and also um, Sergeant Benson are just two of my favourite, you know, unit personnel of all time. They're just fantastic. And I think all the other sort of, um, unit soldiers as well, they're really great. I think like Sergeant Walters and Captain Turner, he was really great. And although he didn't really have a great belief in all this Jesse business, the Doctor Tardis business, he didn't really believe all that. But then when working besides the Doctor and going through with all of this, he started to believe more in about in the supernatural and started to really help the Doctor in his, you know, needs. And so I really like Captain Turner in this. And he felt more of a great soldier with all the soldiers, the guns, the, gr the, the grenades. And I think the fight scene in episode 8 really showed unit strength. The fighting, the action. We really just needed some action in this entire story. And I think episode 8 was the best, best episode for delivering so much action. There was many Cybermen being blown up to bits by bazookas, grenades, guns. Everything to do with that it was so jam-packed, full of action in episode 8. I really loved episode 8. I think that was just one of the best parts I really enjoyed. And also the cliffhangers. Of course the cliffhangers are so brilliant. I really like episode 7's cliffhanger, that was just brilliant. I think that's the best cliffhanger of this entire story. The Simon coming out from the sewers and invading the entire of London. Just an iconic moment and just, it, it has, and it was recreated in the 8th series of Series 8 Dark Water, which the Cybermen um, came out from the St. Paul's Cathedral, I believe. And then also it was like a representation of the invasion that happened. So yeah, I really loved that iconic, that iconic scene. The Simon rising up from the sewers, it was just fantastic. I really loved that. And also the amazing animation that happened within episodes 1 and 4. I really loved the animation and if you've probably seen another previous um, review that I've done, that my top 5 best animation stories of all time, you will probably think that, I mean, you will probably see that the invasion is actually rated, ranked at number 3. And so it is really great. The animation is just superb. I really love the animation. Just su just really great. And I don't find it absolutely boring or absolutely terrible. I think it's just really spot on. Really, you know, no negatives, no positives. I just think, well, yeah, of course, some positives, of course. No negatives would be... A yeah, anyway, yeah, I really do like the animation, and so, yeah, I have to say that it is a really great animation. And it does help to the entire story, otherwise, if we had reconstruction, then it would have been a difficult story to endure. Yeah, it would have been, because you know me, I don't like, I'm not the biggest fan of reconstruction. I'm more into animation, and that's more of like my thing. So, yeah, the animation is really great. Also, I would have to say that I like the Cybermen in this, and although this is like their fourth appearance in the Pachetron era, they've had about four appearances from the Moon Base, the Tomb of the Cybermen, the Wheeling Space. Unfortunately, that story doesn't exist anymore. Only episodes three and six only remain, and also this story. So the, the Cybermen are a recurring and frequent villain in the Pachetron era, and I really love this time where they had, where they kept more out of sight, really, but I really wanted them to appear more in episodes two and three to create some high creepy suspense and i really wanted that suspense to kick into overdrive and create such an intense atmosphere towards the entire story that would have been such a, a brilliant you know plot line to do but unfortunately they left the plot line way to the um, cliffhanger for episode four where they finally see the um where the doctor and jamie finally reveal that the cybermen are coming out from cocoons and that was a really great cliffhanger and i have to say Cybermen in animation form are even better than the original Cybermen on the cover. They're just brilliant. They look more menacing. And of course, I do like the Cybermen within their fight scene, episode 8. And I think they just really take their toll on everything. And they have such a set plan to conquer the entire world. 
and they're bombed to destroy the entire you know nation of London really. So yeah, it was a great setup and a great plan. I might as well tell you the plan right now. Basically, they wanted to deliver a bomb or send some radio signals and confuse people's minds and be and therefore the whole population will be all under some kind of cybernetic control which like some deep radio and um, stations were involved and you know m micro signals were needed and stuff like this and so those radio signals were going down to earth confusing everybody's minds and therefore they'll be under cybernetic control and they could and they they wouldn't interfere with the plans with Tobias Warren or the Cybermen and so, therefore, the Simon could easily deliver their neutron bomb. But then the Doctor had to um, stop them once and for all. But then they defeated or you know the Simon, and then they had to get rid of the the bomb um, up in space because they could deliver their bomb by any means whatsoever, but not by the radio waves because they did destroy the radio waves in episode eight, which unfortunately prevented them from delivering their bomb, you know, really straight away. So they had to deliver it by, you know, by force, going down to Earth and landing the bomb, you know, on Earth really. So they still had to destroy it. And I thought missiles was the best way because they couldn't really go up into space because they didn't have the, you know, the money and the power to go up into space and destroy the Simon spaceship. So missiles was the only thing to help the Doctor, Jamie and Zoe defeat Simon once and for all. And so, yeah, <clears throat> I really do adore the entire story of the invasion. And although, if you don't mind, I personally like the A part. So, and although it doesn't drag on for me, many people think that it does drag on way too long. And I think it may be a bit too long for an invasion story. I think it may be more suited for a six-parter or maybe a seven-parter, but probably not an A-parter because it's three hours long, this. And so, please do take a break in between. But it's a fantastic story. And, I, and also David, um, well, no, Douglas Canfield directed this as well. Same guy who, di um, who directed The Web of Fear. Just a really magnificent um, story. And it was so perfectly constructed and directed. So I would have to say I really, really adore this story so much because of its brilliant characters, the brilliant plot lines, the atmosphere around it. The, I think episode 1 was very, very creepy. And I think I have to say that episode 3, out of all the episodes, is kind of the weakest because although I really do like all the other episodes, I think episode 3 is a bit weak because they're going inside the complex, they make a journey back to London and so, yeah, it's okay. It's, it's a good episode. And I think all the episodes are really good, but the way that they had to put so much effort and so much action and so much suspense and suspicion in every single story, it had to keep the whole story going and it didn't really become such a boredom to me to watch this, but I really adore really adore all of the atmosphere and all the attention and suspension. I really loved that. It was so fantastic. Simon were brilliant. Really fantastic. And Unit, of course, I think without Unit's interaction with the Doctors, with, in, within the Doctor's aid, they would the Doctor wouldn't be able to destroy the Simon or even stop Tavares Vaughan, of course. And so... I, it was so brilliant of Derek Sherwin to introduce Unit in, into the entire story. And from this, Unit will appear in many other Doctor Who stories. And so it's going to be a common factor to be reviewing Unit as well in Doctor Who. For many of my other reviews I'll be doing later in the future. So Unit will be a common thing for many in the John Pertwee era. And also, I think only in two stories for um, Tom Baker as well. And so, yeah, this is where Unit officially starts its journey into the Doctor Who universe. And it will always be remembered, always will be remembered as one of the best things to happen in Doctor Who history. Just a magnificent story. And I think this was the best story that Unit has ever done. And what a great way to introduce Unit. And I think Jamie... And Zoe did a fantastic job. Isabel was really good, okay, but yeah, a bit squeamish and a bit, you know, oh, I don't know why I bothered. And so, yeah, she was really good, but I think her character would have gone a bit more if she could have, you know, put some more enthusiastic in, in, enthusiasm within her, you know, acting. And so that would have been a bit better. And so, yeah, I really adore the invasion so much, but I would really give it a 9.7. I would rank it a bit more, but I think all the characters, sometimes they were a bit weak, apparent for. Professor Watkins was pretty good. I think Gregory was okay. But I think every other 
character i think character need, and pa I mean packer just needed to up his you know character a bit but i think the main character in this for what my favorite character in this is Tobias Vaughn, his sinister personality may be charming, charismatic at times, but he is certainly a fierce and very sinister guy. So very aggressive, and it would be such, a, you know, a, such a crime if you ever, you know, you know, betrayed him or anything like that. You would literally just get killed for that because he's just a sinister guy, and you hate and you don't want to disappoint him. He's just fantastic. Such a fantastic actor, and I think the entire story, well constructed, brilliant animation, unit fantastic, Simon uh, brilliant as well, and uh, yeah, a really great, interesting plotline and a great invasion. Really brilliant story. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching for this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do give a like, but also comment your views in this story, and also please subscribe to my channel if you are new. And so, guys, thanks for watching for this review, and I hope you have really enjoyed this fantastic review. And so, the next review we're going to be doing is our fifth. Review, which will be the seat of death. And so, guys, <clears throat> thanks for watching for this review on the brilliant invasion. And I will see you guys next time for the review on the seat of death, which will encounter the deadly ice warriors. So, see you guys then.